High sick lines. Uh, thanks, Jason, for stopping by our little place here in Marietta. Um, I'm David Turner. This is uh, Turner Bikes World Headquarters. Um, not a very big place. Uh, Jason was uh, bored within a couple of minutes, but uh, he's he's been really polite. And uh, I think the you know, big news here. This first of all, this is our 20th uh, anniversary coming up. We started. I started prototyping the original burner back in 1993 in the spring. Um, so, kind of good timing. Uh, here we are launching the first carbon fiber bike for Turner 20 years later. Okay, so the question is why, why did I do a 29er for our first carbon bike? Um, the first answer, just multi-part answer, the first is that we haven't had a racy type bike since the nitrous. And I think that we really needed it. We, we have a, sm a small line of frames and with the DW link, you know, we've been working with Dave Weagle now um, for a few years and we really needed a very race focused bike. And the DW link in its efficiency, it's perfect for this. Carbon, we can tune the ride, get the bottom bracket stiffness and all that kind of stuff. Perfect for a cross country style bike. 29er. And obviously, 27.5 is exploding. It's on virtually every internet uh, chat. It's on the magazine. Every single magazine cover has something to do with 27.5. Is it here to stay? I don't know. Of course, it's here to stay. Um, it's, a, it's a great, great wheel size. But it is not a 29er. And will never be uh, what this bike can be, or a 29er. Um, short travel cross country bike can be. Um, 29 inch wheels, especially in the lighter sizes, just are so fun to ride quickly over long periods of time. There is uh, no doubt in my mind that 29 inch bikes are, they're not going to be ousted by 27.5. They roll well over lots and lots of small stuff. They, they, just, they just make it buttery smooth. Um, add a few inches of travel, DW link efficiency, you know, in the feel of carbon. And this bike is, it's, you can ride it for hours and don't want to go home. Um, this bike was built uh, overseas, um, made in Taiwan. And that's a first for Turner Bikes as well. They, you know, are supportive of the smaller brands as well. And, you know, the design constraints, uh, we're still using bushings on this bike. It's got grease fittings on all the pivots, something that they're you know, not used to either, but the factory uh, um, was really uh, helpful with that. Uh, one of the concerns that I had <clears throat> in testing competitors' products, yep, some of you guys, I rode your bikes, and uh, you know, I wanted a bike that uh, had particular traits, I guess, uh, characteristics, and I knew that was possible through layup schedule, and, you know, uh, this bike was made with Torre carbon high modulus, but, you know, they make a whole bunch of different versions. So in talking to the engineers at the factory, we were um, able to communicate what, uh, what my idea of, you know, the optimum ride for a, f this is a four inch travel, 100 millimeter travel bike. It was designed around a four inch travel fork. Um, the uh, uh, bottom bracket is, uh, uh, quite, uh, I think, quite good at uh, 12 and uh, it's 12.8 inches. Um, the uh, top tube lengths are 20, well, for a medium, 23 and a half inches long, which is a little longer than we've done since we did uh, the nitrous, I think, was probably the last bike. And again, this bike is aimed at the that you know, cross country race, marathon racing market. And uh, we haven't really had a bike truly to uh, target that type of riding since the nitrous. And that's been, that's been a lot of years. Um, so we have a lot of experience on building a bike like this uh, as far as geometry goes and how a rider fits on it. It was just a matter of uh, getting the ride tuning that we wanted out of the carbon. So the engineers at the factory you know, we communicated with them. We went through different ride samples. Um, both front and rear end uh, can be tuned separately. And you can tune 
for torsion as well as lateral stiffness. Uh, we got a you know a nice stiff bottom bracket. I mean this this down tube goes to pretty much full width, 73 millimeters at the bottom bracket, and uh, as does the seat tube is quite wide, not a full 73 of course because of the DW link um, needing to fit in there. And this bike, as you can see, is front derailleur compatible with the direct mount. Um, Jason was asking a little while ago uh, why we went with, you know, the bottom bracket we did, uh, the head tube, the, you know, the different choices that I made in um, creating this new bike. Because obviously this is the first bike we've ever used a non-threaded bottom bracket shell. And um, one of the things about doing a press fit 30 is that the bearing material, is, the steel bearing, is not pressed directly into the carbon, which that was probably my biggest fear was uh, corrosion. And uh, the, uh, uh, the other was that, you know, we didn't have to machine any grooves or anything in there. Um, the other thing was is that with a press fit 30 bottom bracket, you can run a 30 millimeter spindle made of aluminum alloy, which cuts the weight, increases stiffness, but it also allows the biggest possible ball bearing race. And one of the things that I've seen on my own bikes, uh, even on my wife's bike, my son's bike, you know, they get ridden much here in Southern California, which we have almost no rain, the bearings still wear out. They're, they're little bearings um, in your typical threaded, you know, uh, GXP style uh, bottom bracket cup. And that size bearing is now used in other bottom press fit bottom brackets like BB92 and 105 and 693 and the other 453,000 bottom bracket standards today, many of them are still using those uh, small bearings and I wanted the, the big bearings. Um, something that uh, else we're doing here is we're using a pressed in headset, top and bottom. It's the 44 top, we've been using that since uh, mid-08, um, certainly uh, uh, had good success with it. Um, it allows for a lower hand position if you want it. It's press fit. If your headset does come loose and stuff starts slopping around. On the bottom we boosted the uh, head tube size to what they call a 56. Um, and this allows for a tapered fork to be fully um, hidden in the frame which looks really nice. Um, it uses a very large bearing and again it's pressed in so again if it comes loose the only thing that's banging on each other is the replaceable bearing parts and you know I mean sometimes bearing, uh, headsets come loose and if you're racing uh, your mini tool is buried in a tube or something you may ride for a while before you either get sick of it or the finish line happens and and you can deal with it later the uh, this doesn't allow the head tube to be damaged. It's any damage is contained in the headset. Uh, front derailleur went with a direct mount. Um, it's no harder uh, of a mount or more absolute than the rear derailleur is. And since they're both now dealing with you know some pretty precise uh, shapes in the form of chains and gears as well as the uh, in the case of the front derailleur the cage, um, it gives the best possible shifting. For those that are going to use a front derailleur, obviously we've built up these with uh, XX1. Uh, it's light, don't need a, uh, a derailleur, don't need a um, chain guide, and uh, with the huge uh, range of gears in the back, um, everybody that's been testing this is, uh, you know, not just on turner bikes. They're they're, they're digging the XX1. Um, <clears throat> grease fittings inside. We moved it in here um, on this pivot which we, you know, seat stay pivots, uh, still have the grease fittings on all the main pivots. This bike, uh, the Czar, will come in four sizes, medium, large. Those will be uh, on sale after the Sea Otter, basically. We're going to start shipping those. Extra large and extra, extra large, we're still in uh, um, checking the ride samples. Uh, we just got some more in to check. So uh, a little bit ago, Jason and I were talking about the, um, the ability to run a dropper post on this. Obviously this bike is, you know, XC um, marathon, anywhere from 90 minutes to 90 mile type bike. 
And of course, you know, all over the country, popping up anywhere from, you know, 50 milers to 100K, 100 mile races off road now. Um, and this bike is really targeted at that. Uh, nowhere in its description uh, or design goals was AM ever uh, considered. But for really rough cross country uh, riding and racing, um, this bike can be fit with a dropper post. We have the three um, mounts underneath the top tube for it already threaded for the uh, clamps that hold the front derailleur cable. So you go to a double wide clamp like here and here, and now you can attach your uh, dropper post uh, cable or hydraulic hose. The, uh, the rear dropout setup, it's not a dropout setup actually, it's the rear axle setup. They don't drop out anymore. Um, 142 by 12, it uses the same derailleur hanger. So um, all that stuff is proven. Uh, we use the, the bikes come equipped with DT Swiss axles, which are kind of cool because you can position the uh, handle out of the way when you're done tightening. 